Deontay was way too young to die, and his best friend Tommy was completely broken by his passing. They nearly called every day near the end and Tommy had a hard time accepting that they could not do this anymore. So he decided to put Deontay's old phone with him in the casket, just before he got buried, as at least he could still call him. But he could have never expected that this would happen the other way around. Tommy went into a complete mental meltdown when he saw that he had a missed call from his best friend Deont. How was this possible? He had been dead for at least five days now. He had even seen him get buried in the ground. He had put Deontay's phone with him into the casket, but that was only so he could leave him a voice message every now and again when he missed him. He tried calling the number many times that day without getting through, but then later that afternoon, he got another call from Deontay. Before we start, can we get this video to 1,000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This time Tommy was able to pick it up, and when he heard the voice on the other side of the line, he could not contain his tears anymore. But how could Tommy get calls when Deontay's phone was in the casket? Was his best friend not actually dead? Or was something else going on here? In the early stages of their friendship, not everything was okay between them. They had been going to the same high school, but after that they parted ways for a couple of years because of a shocking reason. Deontay had always been secretive about his family and his past. When they agreed to hang out, it was always at Tommy's place. Deontay always had a reason why it didn't fit their place. Tommy decided to go on investigation at the end of their high school career. He followed Deontay without him knowing to their house. Eventually at his house, he saw some things he did not expect. He expected to see extreme poverty or something else dodgy, but actually it all seemed like a happy family. But this situation confused Tommy even more. Why did Deontay not let his best friend in his house? Tommy couldn't figure it out yet, so he decided to follow Deontay for a couple of days more. He followed him to school, to his home, and to his soccer practice. But after they graduated from high school, they still weren't friends. Tommy found out that Deontay left his state and moved six hours from their hometown. To make things right, Tommy made a brave decision. He drove all the way to Deontay to make amends. When he knocked on Deontay's door, he was really nervous. Would he be open to a conversation? He would soon find this out. Deontay opened the door and immediately things went back to normal. Time seemed to heal all wounds. But after Tommy entered the room and sat down, Deontay had to come clean about something. Deontay told Tommy that he was ill and would not get better. Months after they saw each other, Deontay was getting worse. Tommy and Deontay made sure they kept in contact with calling each other. But after a few weeks, Deontay couldn't answer the phone by himself. When Tommy called, it was usually Deontay's family that answered. They would bring the phone to Deontay, but he couldn't talk as long as he used to. The end was coming. It was two days after their last call that Deontay passed away. Even though Tommy and Deontay had known that the end was coming, Tommy wasn't fully prepared for it. It was an incredibly tough time for him. Deontay's family was thankful that he had come. Tommy had always been a good friend to the family, and they were grateful that he would help them with the funeral. It was a beautiful ceremony. Tommy tried not to get too emotional, but he couldn't help shedding a few tears. It was his best friend he was saying goodbye to. Tommy watched as everyone walked past the casket and said their goodbyes. Tommy wasn't sure he could do it, but he walked up there and tried to say goodbye. He just couldn't. Knowing that he'd never get the chance to talk to his friend again broke his heart. But then he had an idea. He had held on to Deontay's old phone ever since he'd gotten back to his hometown. He couldn't part with it knowing how many memories it had but now was the time. Checking that nobody was looking, Tommy slipped it into the casket and walked away. It was his and Deontay's secret now. Tommy knew, of course, that Deontay wouldn't answer the phone, he'd never be able to again, but the idea of leaving him voicemails was enough for Tommy. The casket was closed and transported to the local cemetery. Deontay's family and friends and Tommy watched the casket get lowered into the ground and buried. It was official. Tommy was the last one to leave. He didn't want to walk away until Deontay was completely buried and safe underground. Once in the car, Tommy called Deontay's phone. It rang for over a minute and finally, the call went to voicemail. This was exactly what Tommy was hoping for.
Tommy's face broke into a smile as he heard the familiar voice of Deontay telling him to leave a message. It was perfect. Tommy left Deontay a message. He talked about the funeral and everyone there. He said goodbye to Deontay and hoped somewhere Deontay could hear his message. Of course, Tommy knew Deontay couldn't really hear it, or could he? Tommy drove back to his apartment in the city and after the long drive, he was ready to sleep. Tommy woke up after sleeping in that morning and tried to go about his morning routine. There was a missed call from sometime in the night. There wasn't a voicemail, but the name on his screen said Dion. How could that be possible? Tommy immediately called the member back. Every chance to speak Deontay one more time would be lovely. When Tommy called the number back, he was obviously really nervous. Then someone picked up the phone. Hello, who is this? Asked Tommy hopefully. But there wasn't any response. Tommy asked again but again, nobody answered. Maybe it was just per accident that his phone got called. But that wouldn't make sense. Then Tommy decided to go on a search for the person who called him. He wanted to find out who called him, not only because he hoped it would be Deont, but if it wasn't him, he wanted to know who pranked him, as Tommy did not find it exactly hilarious. At first, Tommy did not know how to start his search, so he decided to Google as much information as he could about tracking someone's phone down. After a few hours, he figured out how he could find his mysterious caller. But the problem was, he needed to know things about the phone he could not have known. To track down the phone, Tommy needed the serial number of the phone he bought. But there were only two ways to find this out. One of them was impossible because he did not have the phone. The other one was asking the store where Deontay bought the phone. Tommy didn't have another option than going to the store where Deontay bought it. But the store wasn't very helpful at first. They could not show it due to privacy reasons. So Tommy tried to explain the whole situation. After that, the company was willing to give the details to Tommy despite the fact that it was against the regulations that the company has. When Tommy got home, he immediately tracked down the phone. Tommy tracked down the phone, which only took him a few minutes as he learned a lot about it while he read about it. After a few minutes, the location of the phone popped up on his screen. He was shocked when he saw the location. It was quite a familiar location. Actually, the phone was right now only a few hundred meters away from his house. Tommy ran out of his house as hard as he could at the place where the phone was. He was flabbergasted when he saw who was standing there with the phone in his hand. It was Deontay's father. Tommy approached the father and asked about the phone. Deontay's father, whose name is Mark, found the phone during the funeral. As one of the employees that helped them organize the funeral found the phone in the coffin. Mark wanted to have it as a memory. Now it all made sense to Tommy, but Mark also had questions. How did Tommy know where he was? Tommy felt guilty about it and explained the situation right away. After that, Mark only had one request left. He invited Tommy over for diner to recollect more memories about Deontay and his life. It was an evening that the whole family and Tommy truly cherished for the rest of their lives.